Good afternoon, everyone. So, um, first of all, regarding the midterm, uh, these are the topics I had put this up. Um, I thought I had put this up on Canvas uh, over the weekend, but um, I just did this this morning. So, um, the midterm two will only cover up till the last lecture. Today's lecture is not covered. No. Um, however, I will do a bit of a review on just the first part, insertions. Um, other than that, we should be finishing up on ABL trees, primarily looking at deletions and complexity. Okay, those are things which will come up in the final exam. And then we'll go on to yet another way of balancing a BST. And I've mentioned this earlier, those are called uh, red-black trees. Okay, so these are the two different ways in which you can balance BSTs. Insertions, that's it, yeah. yeah. Okay. And not complexity, just doing the insertions, the four rotations, you should know those. Okay, that will definitely be on the exam. All right, so um, let's start with a quick review of those insertions. And I'll just take a look at the last example that we uh, were looking at, which had uh, a number of uh, elements being inserted in that particular order. And so we said, well, uh, we'll start off by inserting 37, 55, 45, and that results in um, an, a BST essentially, which looks like this. Um, and so this is considered as a Z node. This is the Y and the X. And I think there were some questions about on, on Piazza, what is a, a Z node? So a Z node is basically the node where you're performing the, the balancing, okay? So if you detect an imbalance at a particular node, you call that the Z node, and then you figure out which is the Y uh, among its children and which is the X node among its uh, grandchildren. So uh, this is the Z, Y, X scenario, and there you identify this as a right, left imbalance and that requires a right rotation and that will give you the following scenario and then you perform a left rotation so this comprises of two parts a right and a left and after the left rotation this is what you have uh, subsequently we'll insert 25 and 30 so 25 and 30 were inserted and that resulted and then so after you inserted 30 you walk upwards towards the roof and you find the first spot where you find an imbalance okay so as you go up you find an imbalance at 37 and that's going to be the z node all right so this is going to be the z node and the node underneath it will be y and x and so in this case again this is a left right imbalance and so you fix that by doing uh, a left rotation here and a right rotation okay so the left rotation results in this scenario and then you do a right rotation and you get the following and then we continue on to do the 60 80 insertion so the 60 80 results in as you once you've inserted 80 uh, and we go upwards, we find an imbalance at this particular node. So this becomes the Z node. And this is the Y and the X. And you notice that this is a right right imbalance. And so you do a left rotation over. And that results in the following scenario. And then you insert 10 and 20, and that has no uh, imbalancing issues. Okay. So this is just a really quick review about uh, the last. Uh, a big example. Okay, so now the next question is again, this is not going to be covered in the exam in midterm two, but now we're going to look at complexity. Okay. So, what is the complexity of doing, first of all, an insertion? Okay. And we'll take a look at other operations subsequently, but what is the complexity of doing an insertion? Okay. And to answer that, we have to say, well, what are the different steps that are involved? Okay. And another question, which is of course pertinent, is that what is the relationship of H, the height, 
of the street as compared to n. So uh, let's try to answer the first this particular question first. Uh, what do you think is the complexity of the height in terms of n? Now, granted, this is not a trivial question, and I haven't given you any proof, but here again, I'm appealing to your intuition. So basically, we're saying that the tree is somewhat balanced, right? So the whole, the whole idea of doing converting it into an AVL is to convert it into a somewhat balanced tree. So we're calling this a balanced tree, right? And if it's balanced, then what does your intuition say between the relationship between H and N? Yeah, yeah, log of n. All right. So now we're not going to prove that right away. Uh, when we look at red black trees, which is a slightly more complex version of an AVL tree, well, of a BST, then we're going to do a formal proof to show you that h is proportional to log of n. But in an AVL, it's not really that important. Okay, it's sort of a mid mid um, example, you know, mid scenario between a red black tree and a BST. So I'm not going to really prove this. So uh, you have to trust me on this, that H is a big O of log N over here. And the intuition over here is that, well, the tree is balanced. Okay, so if the tree is balanced, um, you can perhaps guess that there's going to be a log N relationship. And if you're not satisfied with that, you'll have to just wait until we talk about red black trees. Hopefully, uh, Towards the end of this lecture or in the next lecture, we give you a formal proof for the RBT case. And if you agree with the RBT proof, then you should be able to sort of say, well, uh, AVL is, should also be, uh, it should also be big O of log n. But let's take that on face value. So now the next question is, given that H is proportional to log of n, what are the steps involved? And if we can identify the steps, which you already know, um, we should be able to look at each one of those steps and say, well, what is the complexity of each one of those steps? Okay. So can somebody uh, repeat what are the basic steps when we're doing an insertion? Yeah. So first step is doing an insertion, right? Next. Yeah, so we go up the nodes and we check for imbalance. And we try to fix that as well. All right. So now let's think about these two steps. Um, what is the complexity of an insert? That should be easy. That's hopefully by now very clear. That's simply log in, right? Why is that a log n? Because when you're doing an insertion in a balanced uh, BST, which is in this case an AVL, basically you go down and you go down as far as H down and you insert at one of those leaves. Okay. And so this is clearly an order of log n process. However, uh, fixing is a bit more tricky. So once you've determined once you've inserted the node as a leaf node, now um, what is the next step or series of steps and what would be the complexity of those? Any thoughts? Uh, I'll come back to you, Jack, if nobody else has any thoughts. So can somebody explain the process of uh, checking. Yeah. For the entire thing. Okay, can you uh, sort of dissect that and tell me why you came up with that answer? Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Can I sorry, get your name again? Ryan. Ryan. So if people followed what Ryan just said, basically the idea here is that 
first of all, after you've done the insertion, you're going, you're walking back upwards all the way to the root. Okay. Now there's a possibility that there was no imbalance. Okay. So that's also possible. In which case, you just go all the way up to the root, and that's it. Okay. And that the number of steps over there is simply the height. And we've already said the height is order of log n. All right. Now, what if there is an imbalance? Okay, so you're, you go up two steps and you find an imbalance, you have to fix that. Okay, and as Ryan said, that if you need to fix an imbalance, then you need to change a bunch of pointers, right? Because this is not an array list, this is pointers, right? It's a the old tree. Now, can somebody tell me how many pointers will have to be fixed? So, this is an interesting question. Uh, I agree with Ryan that it's going to be a fixed number of pointer changes, as you said, right? Uh, but how many? Right? That could be another question. So how many pointer changes would be required to go from this particular scenario to this particular scenario? Can somebody count them for me? You can raise your hand and start counting in light. Okay, which ones? So, so you made one change over here, and then the other change was 60 to 55. So a pointer change over here. Okay. Uh, so that basically is saying that now 45 is now pointing to 60. That's one point of change. And the second change is that now 60's left child is now pointing to 55. Can anybody see more pointer changes? Uh, then in the middle, yeah. Fifty-five to sorry. Okay, so fifty-five to sixty, which is this pointer, and that's going to be a null pointer because now the right child over here is a null. Very good. Um, so that's three. More. Believe me, there are a bunch more. Okay, add that. Exactly. So don't forget about your parents. All right. Uh, that's one parent change. What else? Yeah. Yeah. So now we have one, two, three, four, at least five. Uh, can anybody see any more? So clearly nothing changes over here. All right, this is the same as before. Um, and 55 is going down. So we've changed these two pointers over here. Uh, 55's right child has changed, but 55's left child will, will not change. Okay, so if there was anything underneath 55's left child, then that would remain the same. Okay, so this remains the same. So it seems like, unless we are all mistaken, there's only five changes. Somebody can come up with any further changes I'd be interested to know. But that's all I can see. I think that's all right. So those are five changes, irrespective of the size or location of this. Okay? At least, at, well, at a maximum of five changes. Okay? Uh, if this was in the middle of a huge tree with n being, you know, a million, doesn't matter. Uh, that particular rotation will only result in a fixed number of pointer changes. Now, this was for a right-right case. For a uh, left-left, maybe it'll be similar, but opposite. For a right-left, it'll probably be similar in the sense that it'll be a fixed number of changes, okay? And if it's fixed number of changes, as Ryan pointed out, that it's still going to be, this particular part is going to be um, the changes to fix is going to be order of one, why? Because it simply requires a fixed number of pointer changes. It has nothing to do with n. Okay, but um, the imbalance and the reason why the imbalance, the entire imbalance process, could be order of log n is, and 
Juan, could you repeat that for us? Yeah, so you still, that's not the end of it. So that's just the first imbalance. There's a possibility that there could be subsequent imbalances as well, okay? So you still need to go all the way up to the root and check for all the imbalances, okay? And so each one of those imbalances is going to add a constant for fixing it, but the number of iterations to go all the way to the root could be as many as log n. Okay, you could be deep inside a tree and you have to go all the way to the root, so that's going to be order of log n steps. So, um, so basically what we've said is we've got insert, okay, and then examine the path back, fixing anything. So um, the fixing imbalance is big of one, and order of n is to insert and examine all the way back to the root. Okay, so you can uh, divide up the, st uh, the steps in different ways, but this is you know, sort of a summary way of looking at it. And this is uh, an overall order of log n operation. So basically now we found how to create a balanced BST, we're calling it an ABL, and in order to insert its order of log n, which is good. Next, we need to look at how to do a deletion. All right. Now, how would you would do a deletion in an ABL? Where would you start? Remember, an ABL is basically a BST, and we know how to do deletions in a BST. So just like insertions, where we did an insertion first in a traditional BST, and then we went ahead and tried to fix that to make it compliant with the ABL requirements. So the same thing over here, we're going to do the usual deletion, usual BST deletion, and then we're going to try to fix any imbalances. Okay, so can somebody recall what is the, the process for doing a deletion in a BST? That wasn't too long ago. Right? So let's say we had to delete 42. Any recollections? How would we delete a 42? Anybody? All right. So, in a nutshell, what are you trying to do? Like, yeah. So, so basically, what you're saying is that we could either go on the right subtree or the left subtree, and you choosing to go on the left subtree, you find the largest element in the left subtree, which is 40, and then you replace 40 with 42. Right, so 40 comes up here, and basically uh, you have 40 is now bypassed. It's been, um, so 42 has been replaced by 40. Now, there are two ways to do this. Um, recollect. One is that you actually move the pointers and the other way is to simply swap the values. So either one could be fine, depending on uh, which one poses to be more difficult or easy. That's that's your choice. When you're implementing this, that's that's up to you. Okay. Um, but basically, uh, you're doing the normal uh, BST deletion. But now, once you've done the deletion, uh, you have to now make sure that it still is an ABL. So how do you do that? Think about what we did in the insertion, just exactly the same thing, right? So what did we do in the insertion? Well, we basically said, well, we're going to go upwards and try to see if there are any imbalances, okay? So can somebody see any imbalances? After we've deleted 40 and replaced 42 with 40, so 42 is out, okay? And 40, 40 is in its place. Can somebody tell me if there is a problem with the um, the ABL requirements of balancing? And if so, how would we fix that? Yeah. 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 So um, 
since you've suggested that, now you need to suggest how to fix that. Start with ZXY, ZYX. So this is clearly going to be the Z node. Now, which is the Y node and Y? And why is it the Y node? Yeah, so, so this is, um, it has a higher height than 40. So we're going to choose Y to be uh, 20. Okay, very good, keep going. Which is now going to be the X. X is going to be 25. Why? Because 25 has a bigger height than 10. Okay, very good. So which imbalance is this? This is a left-right imbalance. And how do you fix that? Yeah. And then a right rotation at 30. Uh, so a left rotation at Y and a right rotation at Z. Okay, so this is again sort of a, a review of um, the four cases. Um, let's take a look at this. This is not that trivial. It's a, a somewhat of a larger tree. And this is sort of a, a test of whether you can do these um, balancing because this part is going to become not the deletion part, but just the balancing. Okay, because insertions require balancing. And so this is something that will, if you can get this right, this will be useful for the midterm. Um, can somebody tell me how to do the, the balancing? So what happens when you try to uh, do a left rotation initially? Any suggestions? So this whole portion will remain the same. Okay, so we're not looking at this. We're just looking at this particular subtree over here. And we're trying to do an initial left rotation at node 20. So, anybody? The practice. We almost got half the hand raised up. Okay, go ahead. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay, there you go. So, um, so, 25 has come up, and 20 has come down, and um, the rest of it remains the same. Okay, so 10, 5 over here, and 25 right child remains the same. Okay, the only issue is regarding these two nodes. Okay, and th these two nodes will, because um, now x25 is at the top, they're going to switch sides. And so, can you tell me exactly how they're going to appear? Uh, where is 23 going to be? 22 going to be? Yeah, so the relationship remains the same. All right. So 22, 23 have the same relationship, uh, but now 23's parent becomes 20. It simply goes on the other side. Okay. And the rest of the, the tree remains the same. Uh, so let's take a look at this. This is what we have. Okay, double check. So, um, okay, so going forward, we reach this part. Okay. So here we are. Um, and now, uh, what's the next step? So we've done one rotation. Now. At this point, you might get confused and say, well, um, this particular tree that we've got, should I try to balance this yet a new balance? Or should I go back and follow the process that I was originally completing? No? So please don't get confused over here. You need to follow the original process to completion before you can start doing something new. Right? So the original process was that we started with a left rotation and then we had to do a right rotation. Okay, we have to complete those two steps. Okay, so um, as opposed to as opposed to saying, well, uh, maybe there is an imbalance over here. All right, maybe you need to fix this first. 
No, no, no. We're not going to fix that first. Okay? We have to go back to the original location. We have to see, well, this was the Z node. That was 30. And now you have to fix that before you do anything else. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Left. It goes to the right side. Right side. So, uh, so you know, let's destroy it. it. Might be easier. So, what you just said is that twenty-five is now going to be the new root. Okay. Let me try to draw that over here. Twenty-five up here. And then, so here is the wheel, and you're pulling this down. So 30, and then 40, everything else remains the same. Things underneath 40 remain the same. Uh, 25 comes up. Now let's deal with a simple situation, which is everything on the left of 25 is going to remain exactly as earlier. Okay, so 20, 10, 5, 23. 22. Okay, so all of this remains exactly as it is. Okay, the only situation, the only issue is now where does 28 go? Now 28 will go on the other side of the tree, so now 28 is going to be on the, the left child 30. Okay, so hopefully. Uh, you should be able to take a look at this by now and be able to figure this out. If you're having trouble with this, make sure you get this right because uh, you need this on Wednesday. All right, so that was uh, an example of deletion in a slightly larger case. Uh, and that sort of was also a review of rotations. Okay, so we did a right rotation over here, and this just shows you in a slightly all right, so we're done with the right rotation over here, and then we're at the top of the root, so we don't need to go any further. Now, as I said, you could do this in a single step as well, but, but I wouldn't recommend it. Okay. Now, let's talk about the, de the deletion complexity. Okay, so we just did a deletion. Now, let's think about the complexity, just like we saw the complexity in, in insertion. We need to figure out first of all, well, we know what the height is, so we overcome that portion. Now we need to figure out, well, what are the steps? So um, the first step is, of course, to do a deletion in a BST style. All right. So now let's think about that. What is the complexity of doing a standard BST deletion, which is what we did. That was the first step. Remember? So what's the complexity of that? And um, that itself might comprise of maybe a couple of parts. This should be somewhat for review in the sense that if it's a balanced BST, we know what the complexity is, and uh, we should be able to recall that. Anybody? Yeah, log of n, and but you need to specify what the steps were. Okay, you're absolutely right, but let's talk about the steps. Yeah. So you do a search, and that search, because you know its height is log n, so the search itself will take log n. Yeah. That's the first step. What's the second step? Now you found 42. Now you need to delete it. Somewhere for review. Yeah. Oh, okay, rather than going into the actual nitty gritty, think about the overall operation, right? So when you're deleting a node, uh, in general, what are you doing? It's a constant time operation uh, with some assumption. 
So it's not exactly a constant time operation as yet. Because all, you, all we've done so far is just found the node that we have to delete, right? But now, what do we have to do? We have to find its successor. Remember that? So we have to find its successor, and that successor may be way down uh, deep inside the tree, okay? So the successor, this could be a huge tree over here, underneath on the left side and a big huge tree on the right side now you have to find the successor to be able to find the successor you have to either go on the right or the left and you have to find you know the smallest or the largest right and that itself may take you log n steps why is that because you could be right at the top of a tree and now you're finding the successor so you're finding the successor uh, all the way down at the bottom of the tree and so the number of steps could be log n okay so finding the successor, so this is searching and finding the successor, that's also going to be log n. Two separate distinct steps. And the third step is of course to do the swap. Okay. Or rather to delete the successor and to replace the original uh, node with the successor. And that we know is a constant time operation. Okay. So doing the, the actual swap, so to speak. So this was the original delete. And yes, the answer was absolutely correct. It is a log n, but you need to remember what the steps involved were because uh, I, we may ask you on the exam, what are the actual steps and can you break it down? Okay, so, so you need to know some, some of the details here. So now uh, the deletion uh, in a BST was log n. And now what do we need to do? Okay, so the deletion in an ABL is a little complex comprised of deletion in the BST, and then you have to go ahead and do the balancing. And the balancing requires that you go all the way to the root, just like earlier, and you keep on fixing any imbalance. And we know that from uh, the previous discussion on insertion, that the second part is also a log n. Okay, so let's see if I have this over here. So initially, the first thing is you need to find the value to delete. Okay, and this is a log n, and then you need to find a successor. That itself is a log n, so it's log n plus log n. That's a total of log n. Uh, to delete the successor and to do the swap, okay, that's a constant time operation. Uh, the third part is now you need to go back upwards all the way to the root and to be able to check for any imbalances. Now, fixing those imbalances is going to be a constant time operation. But since you have to go all the way to the root, that might require a number of steps, number of operations, and that you might be deep inside the tree, you may have to go all the way to the top of the tree, and that could be a log n operation. Okay. So this is a somewhat rather complex operation and it has a rather complex uh, complexity analysis um, and you know if you if you do find you find yourself getting confused about the complexity of this uh, think about it a little bit more and i know in some previous lectures people have got you know thought about whether is there is there a recursive um operation going on so is it log is it a nest series of nested log ends no, it's not. Okay, it's a series of successive login operations. Okay, so just in case somebody is getting confused. So overall, um, it's a log n uh, for deletion as well. So uh, we seem to have accomplished quite a bit, right? Uh, we have now found uh, a data structure in which insertion is log n. Deletion is log n. There are no expectations of you know that how do we balance it? So it is a self-balancing tree. And what about search? That needless to say is obviously in log n, okay, because it's a BST. So basically, we've achieved a milestone in this course in that we started off by looking for a data structure where we could do those three key operations, insertions, searches, and deletions. And we didn't have a way to be able to say, well, 
Yes, we found a data structure which can do all of those and log in. Now we finally have. It. Okay, so this is an important point. And of course, and we found a data structure. And um, if this, if this, uh, you know, if there was a stopping point in this course, this could have been one. Right? So unfortunately, we're on only on lecture 17, and we have the uh, ways to go. Right, so we're going to we're not going to stop over here. Although we could have and said, well, we've accomplished quite a bit, quite a lot. So, uh, do we need to do anything more? Well, as uh, computer scientists, of course, we always look for challenges. And so, we're going to say, can we do even better? Okay. So, uh, what do we mean by even better? We've already got log n operations, and how could we, you know, perhaps do something even better? So, well, um, there are two ways to look at this problem to try to do even better. And this is what, you know, researchers think about, is that while we do have log n a complexity, however, complexity is not necessarily all that great. Because there could be times when you're doing a log n operations, but the constants associated with that operation could be really large. Okay? Remember, if something is k, log n, we basically say this becomes order of log n, right? And we say, well, this is simply a constant, so we're going to forget about it. But what if we can find smaller values of k, okay? So, so perhaps if we can find, if we can find another data, data structure, which has the same complexity, but smaller constants associated with it, then maybe that's better. Okay, it's not better in terms of complexity, but in, it's better in terms of absolute value. Okay, so this is where we're going to go on, and this is where red black tree is coming. Okay, but before we go on to red black trees, another question that I'd like um, all of you folks to think about is a sort of a, a general question um, as to what we were able to do when we went from BSTs to heaps. And why is it that we were able to come up with a heap structure which could do certain operations rather nicely? And what did we lose out? Okay, so this is sort of reflecting backwards. And here are the questions that we're going to ask ourselves. So we're going to compare a BST and a heap. Again, useful for the exam as well. So think about the number of operations, what operations were supported in a BST versus what operations were supported in a heap. All right. Um, did you have data in complete order or partial order or no order? Uh, was it was one of them balanced and the other was unbalanced? Okay, was guaranteed to be balanced and the other wasn't guaranteed to be balanced. And um, was what was the worst case performance for those operations? Okay. So let's think about the operations. So in BST, what operations were we supporting as opposed to the heap? So this should be on, if it returns to the finals, because the exam is only two days away. So how are heaps different from a BST? What is the application of, of a heap? Presumably, you're not the only person taking the exam. So, somebody else? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, so, it's not ordered, and you can't do searches. And there's only a certain application that heaps are useful for so far that we've seen, which is priority queues, right? So this is basically priority queues and um, um, priority queues, the operations, if, if you think about the operations in a BST, it was insert, uh, search, and delete. In this case, you can't do searches or you can't do it in any reasonable fashion or drop N is not reasonable. And um, you do have different operations, which instead of being calling it insertion and deletion, we call them NQ and DQ, right? Because now we're talking about a queue. Okay, so we call these operations NQ and DQ. So 
these are different operations on different data structures. Uh, in this case, it was fully ordered, right? So it was fully ordered. In this case, it was partially ordered, right? It wasn't completely disordered, but there was some order. And um, whether it was balanced, yes, this was balanced. And um, sorry, this was not balanced. So this was not balanced. And yes, this was balanced. Okay. In our book, we refer to a heap as a balanced tree. Okay. And so what is the worst case performance and the best case performance? Let's just go to the next slide. And in here, uh, the insert that some of these operations are order of n. Okay, simply because the worst case is that uh, it is completely imbalanced. All right. And in this case, you're guaranteed that your in your operations of interest, which are NQ and DQ, are now order of log n, which is more than what we could have said for insertion and deletion over here. Okay, so in a, in a BST, the insert and delete were order of log, order of n. Right? Because the worst case, it's completely imbalanced. Now, the question that we I'm trying to ask, get, get you guys to think about, is that um, how did we go from one data structure to another, and what can we learn from that? Okay. So basically, what we did was we said, well, what if we try to convert this this strict ordering in the data structure, and we try to loosen it up. And by loosening it up, we're giving up something, we're giving up the ability to do a search in a reasonable manner, but we're gaining something. Okay, so you lose, you loosening up the data structure, and you're saying, well, um, the order is only going to be partially ordered, but as a result of that, we're gaining something, and what we're gaining is that the NQ and the DQ operations can now be done, can be guaranteed to be done in log N. Okay, and the reason is that it's it's balanced. But of course, we lost out on something important as well. That is search. If you don't need to do search, this is great. So the the lesson over here is that if you take a data structure, you're trying to improve it. Well, can you uh, loosen up some aspects of it in order to gain something else? Okay, so you losing something and you gain something. So that's sort of uh, you know what perhaps researchers thought of when they came up with red black trees. Okay, so they said, well, we want to perhaps improve on ABL structure, but it seems hard to improve it as it is, but can we sort of loosen it up a little bit? Okay, and by loosening it up in some sense, we're going to have some advantages. So what do I mean by all of that? Let's take a look at RBTs and maybe you, uh, you can think about what I meant when I was talking about that. So that is sort of a philosophical uh, concept that I was talking about. So let's take, get down to the brass tacks and see what we're talking about. So a red black tree is defined by these four properties. Okay. So uh, I'm not saying that over here, but this is a BST. Okay. So it is a BST that goes without saying. It's a BST in which each node is either red or black. Okay, so now we have colored nodes. Um, the second property is that the root is always going to be black. Okay, so we're just coming up with these uh, properties. And now we're going to define something uh, referred to as null leaves. Okay, now we know what a leaf is. Okay, so if you look at this tree, uh, 5 is a leaf and 40 is a leaf right, because it has no children. And now we're going to define a null leaf. Okay, what is a null leaf? A null leaf is basically these little edges taken out from a tree, from a node, okay, where there is supposed to be a possible node, but there isn't one, that's going to be referred to as a null uh, leaf, okay. In some uh, literature, you'll actually see that shown as a square, okay, so I'll show you a null leaf as a square, so it's not really a node. It's just an empty node. Okay. So I'll remind you of a previous form of assignment. So um, so there is a null leaf over here. There's a null leaf here, and there's a null leaf here. Okay. So 
And the reason why we, we're having a null leaf is because we want every path from the root to all the null leaves to encounter the same number of black nodes. Okay. So now my question is, uh, and let's say, and the last point is that no adjacent two nodes, which are parent, which have a parent child relationship can both be red. Okay. So that's quite a lot. Let's take a look at this node, this tree rather, and see, is it uh, complying with all four requirements? So uh, first of all, it has to be a BST. So that closes our sense. So it's a BST clearly. Uh, so can somebody check all four conditions and tell me if any one or more of the conditions is not being is not satisfied? Each node is either red or black. That's clearly true. The root is always black. That's true over here as well. Yeah. Exactly right. So if you look at this particular path to this particular null leaf, it only encounters one black node, which is the first one. Um, versus if you take this particular path, it encounters two black nodes. Take any other path, they encounter two black nodes. So there are lots of paths over here to null leaves. Okay, so these are all the paths that exist. And you can see that in one of them, which is this one over here, uh, there is only one black node in the entire route. And the others, there are two. Yeah. No, not yet. So we're just saying that the nodes have to be red and black. And they, you know, these are the requirements that um, no adjacent parent child nodes can be red. Okay. So we'll talk about that in a little while. But first of all, let's just Try to recognize. Okay, so I'm sorry, I forgot your name, Thomas. So if uh, people followed what Thomas has said, um, this is clearly not satisfying the third requirement. What about the fourth requirement? Clearly, fourth, fourth requirement has been satisfied. Right? There's only one red node. Okay, so this is almost a red node. I mean, it's almost an RBT. Um, if you had to convert this conveniently into an RBT. Uh, what if I put in a black node over here? Would that convert it into an RBT? Yeah. Uh, this particular node would also have two black, uh, two null leaves. Yeah. So uh, yeah, but we don't necessarily have to show the black, the, the null leaves. Okay, that's sort of it's it's, a, it's assumed even in an exam setting. If you just show these little edges over there, that's fine. So so the null leaves, uh, as I said, in some literature they do show it, but in, in this course we're not going to explicitly show them. Okay, as long as you know that they're there. Um, but um, is it now an RBT after putting in that particular black node? Number 13, you can read the hand right away. So 13. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. And why is that? Because now that, yeah, yeah. And that's a black node. So uh, in my drawing, it appears to be a red node, but when uh, we, we don't have the choice of colors, then you can indicate the color by using a B or an R somewhere near the node. Okay, so this is supposed to be a black node. Okay, so um, so yes, as Thomas suggested, this is now an RBT. Okay, okay. So now let's take a look at a bunch of other examples so that we sort of recognize what RBTs look like. Okay, so here is uh, a tree with all black nodes. Is this an RBT? Yes. Right. Why is that? Because um, it's satisfying, I think, all the conditions, right? I mean, can anybody think of any condition that is not being satisfied? So the, the null leaves are over here. And if you follow the path from the root to any of the null leaves, 
then it will encounter the same number of black nodes. In all those cases, it's going to be three. Okay, so you're counting the root as well and uh, all the way down to the criminal leaf. So the number of black nodes is three, which is the tricky part. Okay, and the others are kind of trivially satisfied. So you don't necessarily have to have red nodes, but you need to have black nodes, okay, because the root has to be black. So this is an example of an RBT. Let's take a look at this. Is this an RBT? Is tree number two an RBT? No? Why not? Yeah. Yeah. So that, that was easy. So there are only two black nodes on the left side on some of these parts, but on some of these parts there are three. So it's it's not an RBT. Okay. But other, other properties are being satisfied. Now, what if I remove a couple of these nodes? Okay, so now uh, is this an RBT? Yeah, it's an RBT because now I have only two and two and two. So all the, all the paths to null leaves are now up to black nodes. Um, now I've inserted a red node seven over here. Okay, somehow I've inserted that. And I'm just saying, well, if this was a tree, would this be an RBT? This, yeah. Okay, what about the last condition? Yeah, so, so you can't have two nodes which are adjacent in the sense of being parent-child relationship and both being red. It can be both black but not red. Okay, so this is not an RBT. Uh, is there any other reason why it's not an RBT besides the third condition? Besides fourth condition? Yeah. Yeah. So if you're going by this particular route. You only, and that's why uh, null leaves are important, okay? Because null leaves can happen anywhere. They don't necessarily have to be at the bottom on a leaf, okay? So this is a non-leaf, but it has a null leaf. So all paths from the root to null leaves must contain the same number of black nodes, and this only has one, and these other paths have two, okay? This has two. So this is not satisfying both of these conditions, yeah? Um, let's keep going. What about this particular case? Now I've converted. Um, what have I done? Um, I have changed some of these nodes and I've swapped them. So now you have a black and a red. Or rather, I've gone from here from node three and I've added a node on the left side. Okay, so this is basically number three with a node which is red. So is this an RBT? By now you can see the top no the top trees are, are RBTs and yeah this is an RBT why because uh, it's satisfying all the requirements so if you look at any particular path so let's say we go down this path it has two black nodes if we go down this particular path it also has two black nodes and every other path has the same number of black nodes okay and there are no red red issues there. Uh, the root is always black, and all the nodes are either red or black. Okay, yeah. That's the big question. That's the big question that we're going to answer, right, as you go forward. So, um, but it's a good question at this point, okay? So this is an RBT, right? And let's think about the question being raised. Is this balanced? Is it a good time to ask that question? And let's take a look at one more example. So here is another example. Um, and what I've done over here is I've added a two over here. Okay, so the two has been added to node three number five. And now is this an RBT? No, because now you've got a serious problem that you know some of these parts have only two, 
and this particular path has got three black nodes, right? So that's not the RBD. Now, and can I sort of get you in? Z? Okay. So Z's question is, um, is an RBT balanced? And that's a critical question for us. Is, in some sense, is it balanced? Or can it be completely unbalanced? Like a, a BST can be completely unbalanced, right? You could have all the nodes, you know, in a string going all the way in one direction, and there's no semblance of a tree in, in, a, in a completely lopsided BST. But in some sense, is an RBT forcing us to have some kind of a balancing, although not as tight a balance structure as compared to AVL, but another sense, yeah. Okay, so part of your answer is completely correct and part of it is somewhat wrong. Okay, so you're absolutely right in your observation that the black nodes are actually balanced. Okay, so if you remove all the red nodes, it's balanced. Okay, but um, you can't really remove the red nodes because you know you have a, a binary tree. So you need to have some kind of pillow here. But if you sort of disregard the red nodes, you can see that the black nodes are essentially balanced. Okay, essentially, right? But we're going to formally prove this. But uh, your second point about having a zillion red nodes over here is not true. Yeah, you can't have two red nodes which are in series, right? So the maximum that you could do is have a black node underneath it. Okay, and that black node is not allowed because, as you saw over here, that changes. The, the number of black nodes to the bottom. Okay, so in a sense, yeah. Yeah. So you're absolutely right about losing it up. So basically, what we said as we went from a BST to a heap, we loosen it up. All right. Uh, we made it un partially uh, sorted. In this case, what we basically done is loosen it up, essentially by inserting red nodes. And by inserting red nodes, red nodes, we've allowed some more imbalancing. But it's not completely imbalanced. Okay, you can't just uh, in an ad hoc manner keep on adding uh, black nodes or red nodes on one side without having to worry about what's going on on the other side, because the number of black nodes has to be balanced. But the number of red nodes is not being counted. When you're talking about the balancing, we're not looking at the, at the red nodes. So essentially, we've loosened up the structure in a different way by inserting red nodes and talking about balancing in a different way. So we're only talking about balancing of the, of the black nodes. Okay? So very good point that in sense that the black nodes can be thought of as being balanced. Okay? So and an RBT, in our book, we're going to call it as a balanced tree, okay? And now we're going to, hopefully in a subsequent lecture, maybe not today, um, we're going to actually prove that, okay? And how are we going to prove it? Well, we're basically going to say, well, what do you mean by balanced, okay? The important thing is that if you're doing a search, this is a BST, so if you're doing a search, you can do a search. The search, the worst case search is going to depend on the height of the street. Okay, so if somehow we can ensure or we can prove that the height of this tree is log of n is big O of log of n, then fine, this is basically balanced, right? Because then we can do a search in log of n. That that would basically imply that this is balanced. Okay. Uh, and of course, we need to be able to do insertions and deletions also in log n. So we can't make it worse than the AVL. And we have to see whether is this any better than AVL. Okay, we've loosened up the structure and we have a little bit more of an imbalance, but how is that an advantage? 
Okay, it's not clear to us. Okay, but we'll see that uh, as you go forward. So, um, so, so this was sort of a look at six structures, which uh, show you some more examples. Uh, let's take a look at some more examples. Okay, now what if um, it's a perfect binary tree? If it's a perfect binary tree, can you have any red nodes? So if you stare at this for a little longer, you realize that in a perfect binary tree, you can't have red nodes, number one. And if it's not a perfect tree, and it, is, it only has black nodes, then it's not going to be an RBT, okay? So an RBT with only black nodes must be perfect in order to be an RBT. Okay, and if I remove some some uh, some node, any node in a perfect uh, RBT with only black nodes, then it's going to result in a non-RBT. Why is that? Because here you can see that number of um, number of black nodes has been reduced. This is only two. This is three. Um, and let's say that we wanted to convert this into an RBT. So I'm just giving you some more practice. Okay. So here, let's say we take number, uh, the previous uh, tree number six, and now I'm saying, well, I want to make it balanced. And earlier we saw that this particular path had three um, black nodes going to leaves. So let's add some more nodes over here. Okay, and now this has three. So is this now an RBT? Just another practice question. Yeah. Yeah, sure. No, so what I'm saying is that if um, it's a perfect binary tree, so let, let's take a look at the statement over here. An RBT with only black nodes must be, must be a perfect binary tree. That's one statement. So if I'm saying that this tree only has black nodes. Then what I'm saying in order to be an RBT, it must be perfect. That's the statement I'm making over here. But you're absolutely right that, you know, it doesn't have to have only black uh, red nodes. Clearly, you could make 10 and 40 red, all right? And there would still be an RBT. But the, what I was trying to say over here was something different, okay? Uh, so is this uh, an RBT? If not, why not? Yeah. Yes. Fifteen for exactly. So if you look at this particular path and you look at this particular path, so you have to remember that there are null leaves everywhere. Okay. There could be null leaves. So you have to think about where all the null leaves, and then you say, well, what about this null leaf? What about this one over here? What about this one over here? Is there a route over here? that has different number of black nodes, so you have to look at those, okay? So I'm just trying to get you to be comfortable with um, properties. So as you can see, if you're taking a, a tree which has a certain depth, now in order to convert that into an RBT, you need to add a certain number of nodes, okay? So it has to be a little fuller, okay? So this is another thing that I'm trying to sort of address over here is that, you just can't convert this into an RBT and expect it to, to just have a few nodes. In order to convert it to an RBT, and let's say you're only adding black nodes, then you have to have a substantial number of black nodes, okay? If you want to retain the same height. So the height over here is the same. Now, in order to convert this into an RBT, I've had to, have, I've had to add all of these black nodes, okay? So you can see that this tree seems to be fairly lopsided, and so that's not allowed, okay? And in a sense, this tree is not so lopsided, it's somewhat balanced, and that's why it's an RBT, okay? So different ways of thinking about an RBT. Okay, so um, again, the question now is, the bigger question is that we saw um, an AVL, and we saw that it was reasonably balanced, Okay, um, and now let's try to compare the extent of balancing between an AVL and an RBT. 
which one is clearly which one is more unbalanced an rbt right simply because we have these black red nodes which are interspersed and when you're looking at the balancing we're not really looking at the red nodes so you can have um you know if you if it was an abl then um you could um you know if, if it was an abl there would be stricter requirements on the balancing okay so now um we're going to try to prove an important relationship and we're going to try to prove that the height of of an rbt if you look at any one of these heights we're going to say well the height of this rbt what is the relationship of this height to order of 2n okay what is the relationship over here and if we can somehow prove that that is log n then that's a big achievement okay and that's basically the, ba the basic idea that uh, you should be able to guess by now that we're going to be heading in this direction, right? We're going to be saying, we're going to somehow prove that the height of an RBT, the top guys, is going to be big O of log N. Okay? Well, that proof requires a few steps, and maybe we can do that today. So let's take a look at the proof. It's not too complicated. It's compared to 550, where you will have a lot more complex proofs. Okay. Uh, so um, let's go back to this particular slide, which was given in lecture 10. So we said basically, if you have a perfect tree, then we know in a perfect tree there is a relationship between h and n, which we said was h is big O of log n. You should be able to you should be able to recognize this slide and remember it by now okay two days next, next one why was this well we basically said well if you have if you increase a perfect tree you keep on increasing the height then we can count the number of nodes and we can say that there is a relationship between the number of nodes and the height and we found we know that if it's a perfect if it is a perfect bst then the number of nodes n is given by this equation n is equal to 2 to the power h plus 1 minus 1 and then you can do a bit of manipulation and you can say well h comes out to be order of log n okay so we went here we went here and so h is big o of log n we already proven that for a perfect tree okay now remember a perfect tree is one which doesn't have any holes it's completely um, symmetric now Keep, keeping this in mind, let's move forward. Um, now we're going to define a couple of parameters. Um, and we're going to say, well, um, we're going to define the following two parameters. We're going to define the black height of a tree. Okay, and we're going to introduce the term BH. So the black height of the tree, as you can imagine, as you can guess, is simply what we've been counting as the number of black nodes to, from the root to a null leaf. Okay, so in this case, what is the, the black height? Well, that's clearly two. Okay, because from the root to any null leaf, you're encountering two nodes, exactly two nodes, regardless of, of the path that you take. And we're going to redefine our height to be cap H instead of small h. And the only difference is that in this time we're going to be counting the nodes. So okay, remember I said that there are two ways to, to count the height. One is to count the edges and the other way is to count the nodes. Well, cap H is going to count the nodes. Uh, small h is counting the edges. And they only differ by one. And this is simply to make the, the subsequent uh, math a little easier. So the height over here, the cap H height is going to be four. Why is that? Because you're going to count the number of nodes to the furthest uh, leaf. So that's one, two, three, four. In terms of edges, it's three. So this is simply equal to h plus one. Okay, so in fact, we've really defined just one additional parameter, which is the black height. Okay. All right, so let, now let's go through the proof. Um, can anybody see the proof coming? So you should have somewhat of an intuition. And if you don't have an intuition, that's not good. If you have intuition, that's really superb, okay? 
So where do you think, how do you think we should, we should prove this? You're basically trying to say, well, this is order of log n. Let's assume that you had to come up with this solution on your own. It's not trivial, but how would you, you know, let's just think at a, at a high level, how would you do that? You want to say, want to say that H and the number of nodes, there's a relationship between them, which is H is big of log n, which basically means that H is less than equal to, you know, some constant times log n. Okay, in that case, you know, this is an upper bound on H. Basically, that's what this means, right? But small h has, it, given a particular size n, then the upper bound on H is something like this equation. Okay, this basically says that, you know, this is big O of log n. So how could we do that? Any thoughts as to how we could approach this problem? And I've introduced BH, which is the black height, and uh, N. So, and we've got H. So can, is there a relationship between the height and the black height? So the height is simply the traditional height of, of the tree, and the black height is simply the black nodes. So is there a relationship between the, the height, the overall height, and the black height? Maybe there's an inequality relationship. Yeah. Yeah, so number one, the black height is going to be less than equal to the height. Well, that's true. Is there a lower limit? So that's a good upper bound on the black height. Okay. Um, what about a lower bound? In terms of H. So what's the smallest black height? Think about a black, yeah. Uh, one, well, in terms of a generic case, so we're not talking about a particular tree. So we're saying given that there are n nodes and given that you have a parameter called h, then you find a relationship between bh and h. You've got an upper limit on bh. Uh, is there a lower limit on bh in terms of h? Yeah. Right, so basically what you could say is that the number of, if you've got a given height, um, so let, let's take a look at the equations, okay? I think you've got somewhere of an idea. But let's take a look at the relationships, okay? So here you have the black height is equal to three, and here the height is five, okay? So clearly the height can be bigger than that h, than the h, okay? So BH is clearly less than equal to H over here. Okay. Let's take a look at some more cases. So here you have a perfect tree. Okay. In the perfect tree, um, in this case, they're all blacks, all black nodes. So you have the black height and the height being equal to each other. Okay. And here's the case. We've, we've tried to insert as many red nodes in the middle. So I've inserted a red node over here, I've inserted a red node here, inserted a red node over here. And so I've tried to create the largest height while retaining the black height to be three. Okay. So the black height is the same for both of these trees, but the height is going from all the way from a minimum value to a maximum value. So now, uh, can you repeat your point? Uh, 
So you could define H max and you could say exactly what you're saying that the, the lower bound is um, is de determined based on the maximum value, which is, uh, but let's just put it in another way. Another way of thinking about this is that if you have H, then the black height could at a minimum be H and um, it could be, it has to be less than 2H. Um, sorry, let me, let me rewrite that. So, the, so given a black height, okay, given a black height, then the range of H can be, so I'm, I'm putting it another way, sorry, but uh, I'm, I'm putting a, range, a limits on H. Uh, so the black height will determine the range of values of H. Okay, and there are different ways of, of saying the same thing. Okay. So given a black height, then the height could either be BH in this case, if you don't have any red nodes, or if you try to insert as many red nodes, you could increase the height all the way up to 2BH. 